because it's unhappy with Victor Orban's so-called transphobia. I didn't realize trans compliance was a condition of EU membership, but apparently back in the 50s, the full name of the original European coal and steel community was the European coal, steel and trans community. David Starkey is just back from Budapest. How does a nation state uh, get 20 million euros withheld because it's not in trans compliance, David? Because Brussels says so. I mean, everything you've been saying, that's all it is. The Commission has appointed itself a monitor of good behaviour, and good behaviour now includes, well, actually tolerating people like me. But there's a very, and you were saying I was in Budapest, I combined it uh, uh, with my belief in, you know, rather like Taki uh, in The Spectator, high life and low life. Uh, I had dinner with the Minister uh, of Defence one night and engaged in a rather sordid gay disco the other night. Let me tell you, there is a perfectly <laughs> agreeable, perfectly mm. agreeable mm. gay scene with charming young men and actually quite a lot of, of, of young ladies all enjoying themselves mm. in a fashion that well, not exactly would be regarded as outre in a London nightclub, but, you know, wouldn't mm. make you feel that they were wearing corsets or bustiers too tight. It was a nice scene. The, again, this whole notion which the European uh, Commission seems to harbour, that there is this omnipresent sense of you know, Orban as a kind of new Putin, or Budapest as a new Moscow. I've been to Moscow. I can tell you there is no comparison. It's an extraordinary... Budapest is an extraordinary city, which, just like London, is much to the left of its government and is allowed to be to the left of its government. And there are trendy places and there are trendy young people with, with, with tattoos and nose piercings and eating strange vegeta vegetarian food. So this idea that there is some wicked anti-European thing isn't true. Mm. What is important is that Orban has dared to say, we do not like the general direction. You've been talking about, uh, mm. uh, with, with, with Ava, one aspect of that general direction and the attempt at a kind of homogenization of finance. Another one, of course, is the European Union's attempt at homogenization of culture. That, you know, what is regarded as an acceptable value uh, in the Netherlands has got to be universally imposed on all of Europe. I mean, I'm sure you know, but most of us don't what the experience of a country like Hungary is. Hungary was for its very, very beginning, and I was there in the, in the great Basilica Church of St. Stephen in the year 1000, when the Kingdom of Hungary is founded. It's the furthest mm. outpost in Eastern Europe of what were then Western Christian values. It's an extraordinarily effective monarchy in the Middle Ages. It even has its own Magna Carta, in the Golden Bull of 1222. And then you know what? It's conquered by Islam. It's conquered by the Turks in 1526, and it only escapes in 1686. That's the time of our glorious revolution. Then, of course, it's conquered again by Russia. It's torn apart in the First World War. A third of Hungarian speakers live outside Hungary. Is it any wonder yeah. that there is a new empire being pushed upon? Yep, you're absolutely right. In fact, Western Ukraine is used to be part of what they now call uh, Greater Hungary. So it no, it lives with its history. What I find interesting as a general observation, David, I'll just run by you, is that the Western world seems to get less nutty the further east you go. So, you know, the super woke capital of super woke is the United States. The British dominions in its fullest sense uh, all follow along with that but a couple of years behind. France and uh, Western Europe are marginally less crackpotted than the English speaking nations and then for the nearest thing to sanity in the developed world now you have to go to Central and Eastern Europe. Is that how it struck you on the ground? Yes, and there's a very good reason for it. They know what real tyranny means. They were occupied by the Germans. They were occupied by the Turks. They were occupied by the Russians. You know, as late as 1956, I remember I was 
You know, I was I was a, an uh, an eleven year old boy. I just started grammar school. The scenes of horror in Budapest as the rising um, against the Russians was repelled, the, uh, was repressed. The prime minister was dragged off first to imprisonment and then to execution. And you know what? Hmm. Most of our intellectuals, our leading left wing intellectuals, and um, the great distinguished historians, what do they all do? They all cheer along and so many of them actually say it was actually worth what happened that communism is such a noble ideal we've never ever con contemplated what these countries endured poland is the same vast waves yeah. of population shift we've no idea about it we are complacent they are not and it is this this resistance to a new empire this resistance to new attempt at yeah. the imposition of that we're seeing in Eastern Europe. Yep, that's ve that's very true. A new empire, uh, uh, an empire of bureaucrats from Brussels, and, and you can't die for you can't. Yeah. Yep, 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 yep. And uh, you're right. Well, I'm glad you had a good time with the Minister of. Defense.